and welcome back to round number five here of, some, of the gym challenge summer series regulation d tournament i am once again hit this coral nail here in the casteries booth we are down to our final round of swiss a lot of talk cut slots on the line and we're gonna see two fantastic trainers on the screen right now with interesting pokemon choices as we're gonna see everett the loon on the screen here whoa uh, if, yeah, here we go. He has a Chiyu, Fluttermane, Rachi Drago, Rillaboom, Isui and Gudra, and a Murkrow for Everett. And for Moses DeLeon, it is going to be that Tatsugiri, Tornadus, Isui and Willigan, Oracle, Fluttermane, and Chiyu. So both these teams carrying the Fluttermane Chiyu combination, but both have very different modes. So for Everett, he does have that Murkrow plus Rachi Drago. Which you could go ahead and go for Tailwind plus Dragon Energy and do a lot of damage to all, a, a wide variety to all of Moses' Pokemon, apart from that Fluttermane. But there is a Sun Mode for Moses, and he's going to be the Isui and Willigan, Torkoal, and GU. And this is going to be very interesting to know from both these trainers as. You have a defensive side for ever and an offensive side for Moses. That Tatsugiri on its own, though, is probably the most interesting thing I could think of for the team here for Moses. As uh, this one actually is carrying a Storm Drain ability, so any water type attacks that would be attacked to will be actually absorb and raise this special attack stat. So, if you didn't know that Isui and uh, that, uh, Tatsugiri had a hidden ability, that's a hidden ability Storm Drain. But anyway, apart from Tatsugiri, let's go ahead and get started with our final round of Swiss, round number five here, between Everett Falou and Moses DeLeon. And we're going to go into the screen here. Um, here we go, we're going to see Tornadus and Fluttermane come out from Moses. We're going to see the typical lead here, and we do see the Merkel Reggie Drago from Everett. Which, it's already being threatened by this Fluttermane because uh, this Reggie Drago cannot touch Fluttermane if it doesn't also go for that Earth Power. And Earth Power are not going to be doing a lot of damage to Red Drago in the first place. So, while he can go for that Terra Steel to avoid the Fairy Weakness, it's not going to be able to go for that Dragon Energy into the Tornadus. And do you see the Draco Meteor over Dragon Pulse, actually? So, a lot of risk reward for this Red Drago. <laughs> but there's also this option for this Tornadus to go for the Sunny Day and get that Photosynthesis onto the Fluttermane to get that boost that it needs with that Choice Specs. So, it's going to be moving at a very fast pace with. Something like that choice specs dazzling gleam that I could do as well as with that fairy terror that's gonna be in his, in his, in his disposal and here comes the flood, the transition for the red drago He's gonna go for a steel terra to make sure that red drago can take a lot of super effective damage and uh, We're gonna see here that red drago go ahead and get that transition going tornadoes opting to go for the tailwind instead in this First turn and Murkrow, I think, also went for the tail in here as both teams match the speeds here. Only to see that this Fluttermane is going to be faster. Going for that Dazzling Gleam, which is going to do a lot of damage to Murkrow, not a lot to Reggie Drago. And Reggie Drago, did he go for the Dragon Energy anyway? No, he went for the Drago Meteor into the Tornadus. And that's an easy one hit knockout with that critical hit. Gonna go ahead and harshly reduce the special attack stat for it. And Tornadus now gone, no longer is able to go for any of its more niche moves like that Sunny Day. But out comes the Chiyu for Moses, so with these speeds being equal towards each other, and the beat is the Ruin now in play. It's very dangerous for this Fluttermane to get a lot of damage off, as um, this Chiyu and the Fluttermane both outspeed this Reggie Drago. And it's going to make life very hard for Everett, as the Terra is gone, you're susceptible to that Heat Wave or that Overheat. Um... Or you just opt to go for that Dark Pulse to get their guaranteed damage into the Reggie Drago as uh, Murkrow's going to consider what it can do for the turn as uh, this is a tough turn for him to decide like what to do because uh, that Draco Meteor is not going to be doing a lot of damage thanks to the double, the, such the attack drop by Tuesday two stages. Is that we're going to see Reggie Draco go for that Protect? And here we're going to have this Fluttermane go for another Dazzling Gleam. This will knock out the Murkrow. But all we have to do now is see what this GU does for this turn. Murkrow will faint. Both Tailwind Setters are gone. And now we're going to find out what this Reggie, what this GU went to opt for is going for that Heat Wave with that Life Orb on it. Reggie Drago going to go ahead and protect itself through that, with that Protect being applied. 
and Ab is going to bring his own Shiyu. So I think at this point, you could. I think Abbott needs to accept that his Reggie Drago either needs to switch out or faint here. Because he's not, likely not going to get enough damage off or not going to get an attack off in the first place. This Chi Yudo for Everett is holding that Choice Scarf fighter, so it will be able to go potentially before this Fluttermane has a chance to move. Unless Moses switches out this Chi Yu here, but no switch that's going to go ahead and happen. We're just going to see a Thrasalization, and I believe this is for the Fluttermane. Yeah, this is for the Fluttermane into the Fairy Typing for Moses, as we're going to see him go ahead and power up his Dazzling Gleam. Broke with the choice facts. And Chiyu is going to be faster. Going to click that overheat into the Flutter main. Not enough for a knockout. Going to go ahead and drop a special attack harshly, but it might be going down here with this dazzling gleam going out. This isn't going to do a lot of damage to the Reggie Drago. Oh, that's actually a lot more damage than I was thinking it would be doing. Chiyu goes for the heat wave. It missed something. It missed the Chiyu. And I think it also missed the Reggie Drago. Oh, wow. We're going to see this Drago Meteor come out into this Chiyu. It's going to do a good amount of damage. Go ahead and drop his special attack down to minus four, but this Chi Yu still not in a great spot because that heat wave miss was very unfortunate. But Reggie Drago somehow got to survive another turn, so uh, yeah, we're just gonna see Moses switch out this Flutter Main and goes into what looks like to be that Torkoal in the back, and it is gonna be a Torkoal in the back for Moses as now he's gonna activate the Sun here and get that fire type attack boost to all of his Pokemon, but also give him Protosynthesis for later. As another overheat comes out into this Torkoal, does almost half to the Torkoal, drops a special attack down to four stages, and Heat Wave does get the double connect, it does get the double knockout, and down goes both Reggie Drago and the Chiyu, and I think there's only a Flutter main left for Everett. If my memory serves correctly, thanks to being in his perspective, I mean, if we're looking at Rillaboom right now, it's not going to be doing well against these fire types. Life for check damage goes into the Chiyu. Tailwind's gone from both sides. And then I still think Gudra wouldn't be favorable here. Yeah, we do see a Fluttermane here in the back. And it's holding that Life Orb, actually. So as we see it hold that Life Orb, it's going to come out of this Dream Ball. We're going to go ahead and get that Protosynthesis activation for that special attack stat. But will it be able to outspeed this Chiyu? Because if it doesn't outspeed the Chiyu, and this could spell trouble as it could easily just go for the life orb overheat into the flutter main with that beads of ruin in play. A lot of things to consider forever. You do have the life orb, so you do get increased damage thanks to that. Oh, it is faster! Dazzling Gleam's gonna go ahead and knock out both Pokemon, actually! She, you gonna go down, Torkoal gonna go down, the life orb protosynthesis boosted flutter main. As now it's gonna be coming down to a flutter main battle between both these trainers. I, oh no, this is going to be coming down to the wire. I think this Fluttermane, I mean, this Fluttermane is choice back, so it's very low HP. But we're going to see what his Protosynthesis boost is right now. It is going to be a speed, actually. So Moses' Fluttermane is going to be faster, but will a choice back Shadow Ball be enough to knock out this Fluttermane? I would think so. But these, I've seen a lot of crazy things happen between these players. Oh, actually, it's going to be a Moon Blast going to come out into this Fluttermane. Will this even be enough to knock out? It is not! This is not enough for a knockout, and that's a Flutter main battle going to Everett's favorite. Everett gonna win game number one by knocking out the Flutter main of Moses. And I'm really curious to see why you didn't go for something like that Shadow Ball as Flutter main faces to, to Everett's own life orb on it, but Everett should still be guaranteed the game, and it is confirmed. Everett wins game number one. I am really curious to see why Moses didn't go for the Terrasalization. Well, go, go for the Shadow Ball onto Everett's Slaughter Bay because it, the Terrasalization was gone after it was used under Reggie Drago. But instead, Reggie Drago got to do a lot more damage than it should have. It also comes down to that double Heat Wave myth that she suffered the first turn it went for it. So a lot of decisions had to be made for both these players. So. Do they stick to the same strategy? Do they switch it up at any form? Or do they stick to their guts? All we're going to wait for as we're going to see both these teams back on the screen 
Everett's perspective, we have Chiyu, Fluttermane, Reggie Drago, Rillaboom, Isui and Guja, and the Murkrow. While for Moses, we have Tatsugiri, Tornadus Incarnate, Isui and Lilligant, Torkoal, Fluttermane, and Chiyu. Yeah, we're going to see Murkrow Chiyu come out maybe for Everett as uh, he's looking to get an offensive option, makes it a choice scarf item, and. Both these trainers both have sun at their disposal, whether it be the Torkoal, the Murkrow, or the Tornadus, because both the Prankster users are having their movesets be centered towards a sun metagame, because they're both having 70, they both have sunny day. They all have similar moves, except for the obvious differences between Bleak Windstorm and Brave Bird. And both trainers have locked in their teams, and we're gonna find out if ever can come out of this set with a 2-0 victory or if Moses forces the game free here. And here we go, we're gonna see the matchups come out as we're gonna transition into the battlefield. We're gonna go ahead and see Moses send out Tornadus and Fluttermane once again for this battle. And we're gonna see Everett go out with the Murkrow and Chiyu. Murkrow, okay, so the Chiyu is gonna go ahead and lower the special defense that of all Pokemon in play with that Beads of Ruin ability. And we're going to see a quick sunny day plus heat wave come out from Everett. So I actually wonder if this is actually going to be a punishing play because this sunny day is actually going to give Butterbait a speed boost, which actually would make it faster than the Chi Yu. And if Moses goes for a Tailwind, he'll have complete speed control over this. And we're going to see a Tarazalization come out immediately. And this looks to be from Moses' Fluttermane. And it is going to be that Fluttermane going to hit him once again to Rasalize into that fairy type. As we're gonna get, it's just gonna get another boost to potentially a Dazzling Gleam or it's Moonblast, or maybe Opera was up like that Thunderbolt. We're gonna see Tailwind come out from Tornadus here from Moses. He's gonna have the speed control, but we're gonna see a sunny day come out from this Murkrow. Gonna get this Chiyu a big boost to his fire type attacks, but indirectly gives this close into this boost to the Fluttermane, increasing its speed as we saw earlier. The Moonblast is the choice of move for this Fluttermane. It's going to go ahead and target down this Chiyu. How much damage is this doing? It's actually a one-hit knockout with that Choice Specs and the Terrestrialization boost. So that was an extremely punishing play that did not go in Everett's favor. And we're going to see a Hisuian Guja come out into the battlefield with that big old shell that came with in the Hisuian region, a time of ancient past. But we do see a Fluttermane as well from Everett in the back, so it may not be over, over, but this Fluttermane is going to be outspeeding everything in the format, and Gudra not particularly in a great spot because it, it's going to be taking a lot of damage from this Fluttermane with that Terra Fairy Choice Specs Moonblast that could potentially get hit by. But Moses and Seth just going to go ahead and switch out the Fluttermane, go ahead and opt for something different, like that Torkoal that he has in the back. Sun's already been set up, but it doesn't hurt to bring in the Torkoal. You want to make sure you take your damage in. And here comes the Tornadus coming back to the Pokeball of Moses. And out comes the Chi Yu for Moses. And we're going to have the same four for him as Beats of Ruin once again comes into play. What does the Murkrow do here? Just go for the Brave Bird into the Torkoal. Does very little damage. What does the Guja do here? Does he go for the Asset Armor? No, he just goes for the Heavy Slam. Not very effective, but considering the Pokemon's weight totals, I think that was okay damage. And we're going to see this. I really think this Chi is in a very good spot with that Tailwind. Now that Murko has not gone for that Tailwind just yet, but the Gujra very much in a bad position. It's very susceptible to that Earth Power, it's susceptible to Heat Wave. I, Moses is just in a very advantageous position that he has a lot of offensive output with his Pokemon. And I wonder if there's any way for Everett to come back in this game because uh, it's looking pretty dire for him as we're going to see him go for the Tailwind now with his Murkrow as he's going to get some speed control back in his favor. Here's the Heat Wave in the sun. Going to go ahead and absolutely take out this Murkrow in one shot. And there is a chance that this Gujra might be able to survive the turn. Goes for the Body Press into the GU. Not enough for a knockout, but it's pretty much in range for anything this one has in store for it as the heat wave goes ahead and takes out the gudra as well and so it is now fluttermane having to do a one on four potentially with this photosynthesis special attack boost for maybe like three more turns or two depending on how many turns there are left we do have terra fairy available which we do know is enough to knock, knock out that torkoal but 
you are still under speeding this Chiyu because of his hailing that the tornado set up on the first turn. So I think protect might be your safer play here, but no, we're just gonna see Ever just go straight up for that Terra Fairy here, hoping to survive the onslaught that is Chiyu plus Torgal. And he's hoping, I think he, I know what he wants. He wants to get the turnaround where if he knows he survives the attack from his Chiyu, from his overheat, maybe more likely. No, it's actually just still going to be faster than this uh, Chiyu and Torkoal. Go ahead and get that double knockout. It is going to be a double knockout. Everett's still in this game somehow. We're going to get that going. And now Moses is just down to Tornadoes and Fluttermane. But this time, it's no longer weak to that Shadow Ball. And we do know... Okay, this Helen's gone. So Everett has a temporary speed advantage. Making, so it basically makes, makes that, that Tornadoes forced to go for Tailwind in order to make sure he has the speed advantage throughout that game. So Flutterman comes back in at full HP. Tornado is also going to come back into the game, but also at full HP. Photosynthesis is going to be a speed booster for the Flutterman with that sunlight up for one more turn. Yeah, for one more turn. And I don't think the Dazzling Gleam does enough damage to both these Pokemon as uh, I think Moses should have this game wrapped up with, with a simple tail and moon blast. Yeah, there's a tail one. We do know the Moon Blast is not enough to knock out the Fluttermane, but it will go down to Life Orb damage. As Choice Specs Moon Blast is locked in for Moses. And let's see how much damage this does to this Fluttermane. Is it a knockout? It is not a knockout, but the Fluttermane... Yeah, it's just going for the Moon Blast. That is going to lose in the game because of that Life Orb recoil. Will this be enough to knock out the Fluttermane? Okay, guys, that's actually really good to know. Good to know that the Moon Blast from Everett's Fluttermane is actually enough to knock out Moses' Fluttermane in one shot, but because it's a single target, it goes down to his own life orb and tornadoes is the reason to, that moses wins this game in a 1-0 fashion and we're going to game number three ladies and gentlemen so many game threes out here and that is really everything you could ask for with this tournament as we're getting a lot of sets into the potential game three Moses once again went for the same four Pokemon, knew, knowing that he could have just won game one had he just went for the Shadow Ball. Could have been a two in his favor, but instead we're going to a game three. And this looking pretty pretty bad for Everett as a, that I don't think that Gucci did much of anything because it got a couple of hits off like the Heavy Slam and the Body Press, but neither hit were, was a knockout. And by the time he had everything set up, it was a little too late. So. Maybe you consider the Rillaboom for game number three, but you, you have to also consider there's so many fire types in this game that maybe it's worth considering bringing Reggie Drago back again. We're going to once again see in the screen here Everett's team of Chiyu, Fluttermane, Reggie Drago, Rillaboom, Gudra, and Murkrow. And for Moses, we're going to see a Tatsugiri, Tornadoes Incarnate, Will Hisui and Lilligant, Oracle. Fluttermane and the Chiyu. The winner of this game will likely advances into the top cut phase of this tournament. The loser likely eliminated. And both players lock in their teams and we are gonna get severed in another game three set. Four out of the five rounds of, on the screen here went to game three, the exception being Abigail in round number three. And here we go. We're going straight into the battlefield here for game number three. We have Tornadoes and Fluttermane once again for Moses for a third straight game. And we're going to see Murkrow Fluttermane for Moses. As we're going to see a switch up from that Chiyu in game one that actually did not do well in that game number two. And we're seeing Tailwind protect potentially from Moses' side. Yeah, we're actually, he's going to go ahead and reconsider that option. I wonder if you actually go for the Dazzling Gleam here because... um. You do have that option of going for that Dazzling Gleam, making sure that both Tornadoes and Fluttermane go down to under half HP. As Everett does lock in Terra Fairy with Dazzling Gleam with his Fluttermane. I wonder what Moses does here in this situation. Because both these Fluttermane are trained differently. Because Moses is a Choice Specs variant with the Speed Boost. So you'll get a Speed Advantage plus the Choice Specs to gain a lot of damage in his favor. But we've seen Everett's being trained specifically for special attacks that with that bulk the special attack booster you gets from the photosynthesis ability and that life orb there is the terrestrialization for everett i think for that fluttermane being fairy both these fluttermane are actually fairy terra so we're gonna see who's in front it is from moses it's gonna be that tailwind coming out 
from Moses' uh, Flutter main, as we're going to see Everett go for that Thrasalization. We're seeing a Moonblast now. This is no longer Terra Fairy. This is going to be a bit bigger survival here. And now Chrome's the Dazzling Gleam from this Flutter main. It's going to be doing a lot of damage here. That's half to the Flutter main. And a significant amount of damage to this uh, Tornadus here. As Braver going to go ahead and go into the Flutter main, pick up the Knockout. And that is one of Moses' heavy hitters just gone. Turn one. And now there's a chance that this Flutterman just goes for a tailwind of his own. I mean, the Murkrow could go for the tailwind of his own. And there's a Chi Yu coming in for Moses. It's in a pretty good spot with that tailwind up. And it should be able to do enough damage to take the knockout onto that Fluttermane. That's at very low HP after that Moon Blast that it took. But you also need to consider what does the Chi Yu actually do here. Because it's only safe moves Dark Pulse, which is not enough to go for the knockout. And then there's Heat Wave and. Uh, he went an overheat, which both can have a chance to miss. So this is, this is a really tough spot for Moses. He probably brought the same four Pokemon once again. Probably does have that Torkoal sitting in the back because of the, how good Torkoal was that game, sending it the sun manually. And here comes the Flutterman going for a protect. Doesn't want to risk getting knocked out immediately. And we're going to see the Murkrow like to go for the Tailwind here, matching it. So now Everett has a Tailwind turn advantage because he went for a, a turn later than Everett did. Here comes the Bleak Wind Storm. Going to hit the Protect at the Fluttermane. And does it hit the Murkrow? It does not hit the Murkrow. We've seen another Storm move miss on the Mur on the target. Here comes the Heat Wave. Going to go ahead and try to go for it for Fluttermane. Also going to hit the Protect. But it will connect on the Murkrow. How much damage? A critical hit. Down goes the Murkrow in one shot. Once again did that critical hit. And Everett down the Pokemon. But this time it wasn't the Fluttermane. As we do see Chi Yu in the back. And this Chiyu is Choice Scar, so it is going to be faster than Moses is, but... Is Heat Wave the safer option? Because... Yeah, we do see the Heat Wave come out, so... Now it's just going to come down to how fast this Fluttermane is compared to the Chiyu here of Moses. And Heat Wave does double connect. It's Tornadoes for Knockout. The, now, is the Fluttermane for Everett faster than Moses' Chiyu? We're going to find out right now. It is faster. The Moon Blast going to connect with that special attack protosynthesis and the Life Orb, which is enough for a knockout. Chiyu goes down, and I think Moses is down to his Torkoal. And this probably spells game over for Moses. As if it's Torkoal, yeah, you don't have much way out. Yeah, it's Torkoal. Uh-oh. This is not good. And down goes the Torkoal, the drought activating. Actually, there was no pr photosynthesis, actually. I'm sorry for that mistake. So now this photosynthesis is up, and uh, Fluttermane should be able to take the knockout with the Shadow Ball and the Chiyu going for another Specs Heat Wave, a Scarf Heat Wave under the sun. It's going to be a lot of damage coming in. Heat Wave going to connect onto the Torkoal. There's so much damage under the sun. As Torque is going to go ahead and eat up its Citrus Berry, get a bit of HP back, but this Fluttermane is just going to go for a Shadow Ball with the Protosynthesis Boost and the Life Orb. Down goes the Torkoal, and Everett wins the set 2-1 to one with that Fluttermane being the centerpiece of his wins in both games. Surviving a Moon Blast Game 1, taking out three of... They're doing a massive amount of damage to Fluttermane, Tornadus, and Chiyu to take the knockout. They even took the last knockout of Torkoal. And Everett going to go ahead and win the set 2-1. to one, And that likely secures him a top cut slot for the Regulation D tournament here in Gym Challenge Summer Series. In this Gym Challenge Summer Series. So as we're going to be awaiting our final slots for this tournament, we're going to find out who makes it to the top cut, who didn't make the top cut, what teams are already going to see. Familiar faces, all of that information. We'll get that soon enough. We'll see you in Taka next up.